Okay, guys, welcome to Corona Part Two. Do oh. dos de la wa. Oh. Oh, see. Oh, I think this might just have to be a food video because. Yeah. Food of Corona. Do you. Do you. Okay, we're gonna be talking to you guys in this video all about food in Corona. Yes. Our favorite part. So we were there for five days, so we had like our taste of a few meals. I'm Filipino, so trust me. Uh, breakfast was always included in our resort, which was a little bit sad face. But anyways, I most of the time, I don't really eat breakfast anyways, and just omit that, go to coffee, have your bowel movement, and then move on to their next meal. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't checked out my first uh, Corona video, check that out. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and we share it with all of your friends. Just do the right thing. Come on. We all stuff. So today we are gonna delve into Corona food, um, a recommendation. So as a foreigner, like I'm not I'm not super familiar with all the different types of food that are available, but luckily I have somebody who's very versed in that. And there's just there's such delicious food. I mean, there's such an array. It's such a different. No matter what your taste buds are, there's something that's going to satisfy them. Yes, and we pretty much stayed keto the whole time, if you guys are interested. Uh, we just avoided the rice, but a lot of Filipino food is very keto friendly, so we'll get into that. Alright, so the first thing I ate when I was there, Matt was sick like I mentioned in my last video, so I got street food. So street food is an option. Um, there's a lot of um, just basically just walk around and there's like little mini stores where you can buy bottled water, you can get your toiletries there. Um, you can uh, also find like little home cooked meals or food that people are going to have laid out. And they're really inexpensive, that's the benefit of it. And um, you just take your food to go and... No! I ha Okay, you're done. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving you one more chance. Yeah, like, like so much of, of the, the cuisine is like it's... it's Rice is sort of a filler. Rice, noodles, these these carbs are like what really fills bread. you up and make, and make bread and makes you feel really full. They also have like street barbecue, they have street, um, you know, rotisserie chicken and grilled chicken barbecue on a stick on the street. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely one option. The next thing, of course, the restaurant. So we'll give you guys where we ate and whether we recommend it or not. First restaurant we ate at was No Noise Barbecue. You just simply got on a tricycle. It's $10, 10 pesos per person on a tricycle. Um, sometimes they're a little finicky. They'll say like 12 to 15 for tourists, whatever, but whatever. Uh, most of them, if you just hand them the the money, like 10 per person, none of them will really say anything. That's Going it. to Lola No Noise. Back to food. Yeah, so it was, Dinner time, it was it was a little bit busy. We, we had a little bit of a wait when we got there. So I guess it's, it's a popular place to go. A lot of people like it. Oh, you're supposed to sit yourself, seat yourself or something? Oh, yeah, I couldn't remember, but it was super full and we had to wait for people. It didn't do that long of a wait. Yeah, and then they told us 45 minutes for our food. Yeah, let's, it ended up being I'll get into the island time. 20 minutes. Okay, so we uh, from Lola Nones, we ordered um, a dish that a Filipino dish that we have come to love and I've loved it forever but Nat has come to love is called bulalo and basically it's a soup it's like beef shank that's been boiling for a very long many hours where basically you get the, the bone it like it should just pop off like it did at Lola Nonois and you get the marrow so good and the meat you just kind of gotta kiss the meat yeah. you just gotta go for it and just kiss it yeah, I guess from like the American point of view, it's, it's sort of just like a beef stew type situation, but so much more flavorful than the normal beef not stew that we would get. And there's, you know, there's not a whole ton of it's like bone broth. Yeah, I mean, there's not like a whole ton of like veggies and stuff like mixed in. It's just, just it's it pretty, can be. It's pretty minimalistic usually. Cabbage. A whole peppercorn. But like the meat and like just the broth and everything that's in the bowl is just so there's so much flavor. It's pretty much bone broth, which is. Excellent for you. So, yeah, so good for you. Anyways, and very keto friendly. Another There's usually quite a bit of meat in the bowl too, like, so you can get pretty full. Yeah. If you like meat. And another thing we ordered there is crispy pata. That's basically deep fried pork. Usually it should come in the bone, like one big piece, but sometimes um, 
which is a no-no, is you they chop the meat up and then deep fry it because then it just comes out all like little pieces that are like not that amazing. Um, so I noticed at Lola Nonoy, some people who ordered the same dish got the big bone and I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. And we ordered it and we got the little pieces. And so, so like the best way to do it from like what your dad was saying is this big giant piece deep fried, but like sometimes they'll like she said, chop chop it up. Yeah. If you get lucky, you'll get that big bone. And then we ordered also uh, pork sisig, and that's supposed to be like finely chopped uh, chopped up meat with onion flavor, and so, you know, obviously salt, pepper. And I and noticed lime. this time around, like people really love like getting a little fancy with their sisig and adding like a mayonnaise kind of thing on top mm. with like an it's egg. Risen. I'm not a fan of that. It makes it a little too soupy, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. Yeah. But um, I like it to taste like finely chopped meat, onion, and the one at Lola Nonois was a little bit on the soupier side of seasick, which I technically think is not uh, all authentic, but and was not really yeah, wasn't one of my favorite dishes there. It was more like a like a taco meat filling. It was like lime and like cilantro kind of flavor, like with meat, like like you would put inside of a small like like corn tortilla taco. Okay. So good. These are like dishes that are this is um, my own so perspective. near okay. and dear to my heart. And then when he describes it like tacos and whatnot, I'm just like... I'm describing the flavor <laughs> that I get in my mouth. Okay, anyway, uh, we also ordered um, pork barbecue on skewers. Again, some of these foods might be delicious to me just because like I remember it's more nostalgic you now growing up around these foods and like visiting to the Philippines a lot when I was young and living there for seven years when I was little but um, I noticed yeah some things I really enjoy some flavors because they're nostalgic and he may not enjoy them as much yeah but I did want to try their embutido let us know in the comments if you guys have tried that or are going to try that later yeah it's like meatloaf that they steam cook is really good. Definitely Lola Noise. Thumbs up, recommend it if you guys are there. Um, at least one night, the environment was awesome. I already wrote them a Yelp review, so check my Yelp review out. <laughs> Elaine Kempf. Yeah, the atmosphere was awesome. It was like a nice family environment. It is outdoors, but they have a ton of um, fans. And so I never really felt like, oh, bugs are on me, there's flies or anything like that. It looked pretty clean from where I could see the kitchen and Overall, great environment, lots of tourists, um, people playing cards. Uh, it's just a very touristy like area. People um, are less conservative. You know, like I was not like in the province where you would be like a little more covered up when you're going out. Like I could wear this and it would be fine. I could wear a sports bra in there. I could go there barefoot. I saw tourists barefoot walking around town. So the very next day with the street food, we went to the town of Makini, Sete Picados. Uh, there was just, you know, like a, a it's called a Sorry Sorry store, which is, you'll see. It's uh, like a convenience store in a little per privately owned. There's a lot of those. It's like a very popular business to have. Because people have little stores in front of their homes. So one of them was selling um, burgers and whatnot. So Matt got a keto meal. He just got the patties and um, with cheese on top. And then also uh, they sell like quail eggs that are fried and all that that you can get a little sauce on. That's a popular street food. Um, the next restaurant that we highly recommend is called Kawaiian Grill. Again, along the lines of keto, we did order the double order of bulalo. Also excellent, delicious, bone broth, so good, cannot get enough of it. And there are like little kubo, what they call it, the straw houses. Um, so each table outside has like a little kubo feel, so it's kind of actually quaint and very cute. And then there's even ones that you can like sit on the ground. Ordered a double order of bulalo and he said it was, he was kind of shocked. He's like, oh, that's like good for four people or whatever. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, we're gonna have that. Like, really? He was pretty surprised. No, but then when we told him we don't eat rice, then he was like, oh, really? <laughs> the bulalo is really big. But anyways, it was delicious. The barbecue, also the bulalo, was so good. We finished it to the last drop. I like the barbecue better than personally for me okay <laughs> so if you're if you're if you're going for barbecue I recommend this place Kauaian grill looks like they have we came there for like a late lunch so we were pretty much the only ones which is good if you're getting below because the longer that sits and stews I know it was delicious the more like moist and like succulent that meat is mm. oh, <laughs> I'm hungry <laughs> okay so 
definitely recommend Hawaiian okay. Grill. It's right in town. Both of all these places are right in town. And then another place that we ate at for a nicer dinner is Soleil at Soleil Resort. It's a buffet. So that one, uh, see my Yelp review on that. Uh, I think they also have regular menu food during certain times. Like there's a breakfast menu, lunch menu, dinner menu, then there's the buffet time. So depending on which time you show up, that's what's being served at that time. So I think we showed up during the buffet time. The environment was really, really nice. Like, but the food itself was uh, literally when we got there, early dinner, like maybe six. But when we got there, they were seriously turning on the sternos to warm up the food again or something. Yeah. So yeah. the food, our first round of the buffet was a little bit on cold. And then our second round was getting a little warmer, still cold. The best dish they had was probably the pork. Um, stew or something like that. Yeah. And that one they actually ran out of pork. It was like pork and mushrooms. And then um, they had like a seafood thing, which wasn't the freshest, but it didn't suck either. It was alright. Yeah, I think it was and only because we were trying to be keto too. Tempura. So like if you're if you're fine with carbs and all that, there were some pretty good fried there was a options. Yeah. yeah, there was a pasta, pasta bar. bar, which is basically their omelet materials, like all the omelet fixings that they put either white sauce, red sauce, and then put the pasta in. It's pasta, it's omelet fixings. I kid you not, it, they even said it's like the ham, it's even the ham and the bacon, and they don't have any like ground meat or anything like that. It's omelet stuff in your pasta basically. So if you imagine like going to like CeCe's Pizza or something like that, where you, you have like- His your... white analogy. What? Okay. Hey, this is helping somebody. <laughs> you have your normal pastas and you always have a white sauce and a red sauce. And then there's this this assortment of, of <laughs> fixins, as we say in Texas, that they can kind of fry up in a little a little frying pan with your pasta and your sauce together. And so you get a little hot little pasta dish with some mixins in it. And it looked like it was probably pretty good, but of course we're trying to be keto and we're trying to eliminate as many carbs as we can. Well, not even that. Even if I wasn't keto, I don't want to eat cold food. Well, if it's coming out of a skillet, I think it was 700 pesos a person or seven something, which is about uh, like 12 to 15 dollars or something. In so for a buffet, not bad. Um, the dessert wise, they had like a little rum ball cakes. We did try one each. Uh, it was okay. It was like super fudgy and rich. And then they had um, fruit to sort of, they had coffee and tea, which was actually pretty good. The reason why I gave it a four star, even though the food was marginal, uh, strong ass Wi-Fi. He was able to download tons of stuff. You know, customer service is on point. Environment is very clean and like, it's a place where you would probably need to wear nice clothes. Not like the touristy place where I told you guys like, you know, like a sports bra and like barefoot or something would be fine. Even a bikini would be fine. But this place, you kind of have to be like on the decent side. Yeah. And um, the resort itself, like you can even eat outdoors. Um, and you, there's like a really nice pool and like a bar by the pool that was really nice. And the bathrooms were excellent. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, and this was walking distance from where we were staying too, so it was pretty convenient. Yeah, and we stayed there for actually quite a while, like sipping coffee. Uh, so overall, we give Soleil a restaurant... <laughs> it depends. <laughs> I liked it. I thought it was refreshing. Like the environments of Carl's, I thought it looked cool. There's little bungalows in oh, yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Another cool bowl like, experience. You know, like it could it could be fun. Like if if the the staff was like friendly and and we came with a good fun. attitude. Well, I did. Or maybe if you've already had a few drinks before you show up, then oh. maybe you would have a better time. But the prices were a little on the lower side, like maybe by a hundred pesos or so. Not that much lower, but I could see why people might think there's potential there. Yeah, I think maybe it's just the location is so close to like so many of the hostels and everything that's, yeah. that's in the area. Like, and I guess it's easy to get to. Maybe they're trying to cater maybe to, yeah. to certain. And the thing is, they're getting like tourists who like don't know anything about Filipino food, so to them it's just like oh, like a little like fajita with like some curry on it or something. Um, no. All right, guys. In a previous video, you saw that we had the chicken seasick. It ain't seasick, man. <laughs> As we started eating it, the taste kind of grew on me a little more. But it still is not seasick. They should have called it, since it's in a skillet, they should have called it sizzling um, chicken saute. With a Thai sauce. <laughs> Try to offer, yeah. you know, a dish where you know people are going to be judging you for that dish. Because you're trying to offer not a Filipino dish, in the, in the case of the ribs. 
Yeah, well, we didn't get to try their Carl's special and other things that were, they were out of. But anywho, so no. No, don't, don't. Unless, no, there's no one. Unless, unless you're Go hammered. somewhere else. There's so many other options. I mean, even if it for the atmosphere, no. Maybe if you're hammered and it's like a, it's like a. Just the get, only option. Just getting an appetizer. <laughs> or the only option. Before you head back to Okay, you're hostel. hammered and it's like raining even harder than it already was. And that's the only place open. And you're stranded on an island. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and you're starving. Even then, you're going to be kind of... <laughs> no, eh, maybe. But see. Okay, anyway, let's move on. Okay. okay. Next place Moving we're going to talk about is... Um, oh. oh, no, not that. Next place we're going to talk about is Coffee Kong. Oh, Coffee Kong. Okay, coffee, espresso, internet, they have two routers. Um, still slow, especially because everyone loves going there. But they do have the espresso, so if you want Americano, you want iced coffee, the ice is filtered. If you're trying to order like a gigantic breakfast, do not go there, it's too expensive. Yeah. Do not, if you're trying to get, if you get one of their special meals now, okay, get it with whatever's included in the package. We were trying to go off the menu, and the ladies there can vary, like, in the prices that they give you. Like they were about to charge me 50 pesos per bacon slice. That's a dollar per bacon slice. And I'm like, dude, I know we are on vacation, but that is a lot. And when it came out, it was half a bacon. Half bacon. They charged me 50 pesos for what? half a bacon. That was the so, biggest gouge yeah, so of this whole trip. The, the, the menu says two pieces of bacon for, for the meal. But what it, when it comes out, it's one piece of bacon sliced in half. And they're calling it put two. Put next to each other, that's two. No, 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 that's, that's... Okay, main gist is that do not order their food there or go off the menu. But coffee, yeah. delicious. Yeah, because really in the Philippines it's... Alcohol, it's, delicious. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really popular to have the three-in-one coffee type situation yeah. in the Philippines. Like, there's not a lot of places that actually do... Instant coffee's big. ...brewed espresso, like, actual... Es actual coffee. Es so it, it was refreshing. It, wasn't, it wasn't that expensive either. Espresso. Right? Espresso. Okay! <laughs> Okay, so espresso. So it's a great place for coffee. Yes, yeah. go with the coffee. Yeah. We bought our own. We brought our own stevia with us, so we um, just asked for everything unsweetened. I always ordered the. So I went ahead and used up my carb allotment for the day and got a latte. Um, but I did add, put extra shots in it so that the amount of milk was actually minimal. So it was like steamed milk, and I put my stevia in it. It was delicious. It was my one little splurge of the day on our trip, and yes. Highly recommend. He always ordered a large iced coffee, um, not creamed or sweetened, and then he added stevia and cinnamon. Worth it. Um, they also serve alcohol. We on our last night we splurged on a white Russian, and it was actually really good. And the not, not bad at all. And um, that brings us to alcohol. Next door to that, there is an after party at a place called like Tattoos and what. Tattoos and... Should I YOLO and get a tattoo? You... you don't make tattoo decisions when you're drinking. Wait, if I get a tattoo with you, not right now, but I mean, if in general, you have to try below. While we're getting tattoos? Yes, but not necessary. We'll blog about it. <laughs> yes, but not necessary. If I get a tattoo with him, he has to try below. Not together. I mean, not while we're getting the tattoo, but... That's the deal. Yeah, it's, you know? it's it's like a bar that has a tattoo shop kind of kind of built into it. Yeah. It's on the front window of the, of the shop. And it was like so much fun. I had yeah, a lot like, of fun. <laughs> Let's check this out. Like, a lot of fun there. We, we've driven past a bunch of places, a bunch of different bars, and never really went into because it, it didn't look that exciting. But like this yeah. place actually, there's, you we know, were this... a little disappointed because we were not full at all. This was the whole like going from the lobster place and leaving. Yeah. Then the Carl's were very disappointing. And then after Just that, we got a drink. Pouring rain. <laughs> we were like soaked, creating. But then we went to this place and, and there's live music in there. It's such a great place, and like we, we met new people and like just were able to have some really great conversations. And there's, you know, tons of oh tourists gosh. in there. It was tourists, so tourists, exhausting. Tourists and locals. You tourists. No, I'm not a local there, but I'm also a tourist. But it was really exhausting because we did meet a really nice young guy there. Vincent is only 19. He's about to go into a bulking phase. Yes, Vincent will be bulking. We're at the bar. We started chatting for a really long time. And 
I had to translate, and in a bar you're already speaking so loud, my throat hurt so bad the next day for not the right reasons. Experience the yeah! Like. Anyway. Hmm. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> drinks. Oh, yeah, drinks. So he just had his usual, I think. Oh, you got chivas on rocks. And there's, I tried. There's not, there's not a huge selection of whiskeys, but. Yeah. And I was interested in trying a black Russian. I've never seen that before, but do not get it super sweet. It's not keto friendly, and I did not like it. Yeah. It's basically they don't put the milk in there, so they just add more Kahlua or some kind of sweetener. I don't know, but it, I was not feeling it. Okay, there was a bar fight, so we're. Uh... So most of the food is actually going to be okay. There were a few instances of stomach bugs for all of us going around in family. Um, Matt and AJ got it the worst. I had maybe one episode. Um, so you just got to be, you know, most of it is okay, the food. And you just got to be careful. Always drink bottled water, distilled if possible, because some of the spring water or some of the mineralized water eh, kind of tastes kind of funky. So always go with the distilled. We stuck with the absolute brand and also Wilkins Distilled. Those two taste most closely to our reverse osmosis water. So just be careful with along the lines of water, the ice. So the other thing is like, it's gonna be in places where you least expect it. Like, you know, obviously like you're gonna be careful when you're at home or at someone else's house, but if you really want that iced coffee and it's so hot and all that, and you just forget that, oh yeah, shoot, the ice. We've got to just ask them where they got the water for the ice. And a lot of the places actually said that they were filtered. So, and so that was that. Oh yeah, the one where you got hit was, um, it was in a dessert at a restaurant we were at, and we, they brought out the dessert. We're like, oh, this looks so good, and we started enjoying it. And like midway, eh, like a, a few bites away, I realized, oh man, there was shaved ice in there that we totally fell for just because I don't know, you don't expect ice in a dessert, like shaved ice. So that's another thing you guys gotta watch out for. Um, so shakes, things like that, dessert shakes. Most of these bigger chain places, you're gonna be okay. Probably. But if it looks like a sketchy place, sometimes they'll say yeah. Just go with your own judgment of whether the person understood you truly or not. Because, yeah, you do not, like if you get real bad um, diarrhea, you can be out of commission for a few days. You're gonna have low energy, you're gonna be dehydrated. You're gonna be out of commission basically. And some instances you might need to be hospitalized for IV antibiotics. So just be careful, really careful with the water. And even some of the broths, I even asked some of the waiters, like oh, uh, like some of the soup based dishes yeah. we were getting, I was asking them how long that they were boiling that for. And also if sometimes they boil the meat with one kind of like liquid and then toss that out and put in new water so again you're on vacation and you want to enjoy your vacation and not be on the toilet the whole time all these restaurants uh accept cash only we know before you go there make sure you have cash from the u.s that you've exchanged for pesos otherwise there is an atm in corona town but there is an atm fee luckily we have usaa and they don't have uh, or they reimburse us for all atm fees but i can see how the atm fees five dollar fees can add up. You're gonna withdraw the money in pesos. So uh, the currency changes every day. In On average, I just think of it as 50 pesos is $1, but it really varies every single day. Like it could be 50.80, it could be 50. When we got the first, very first day we got there, it would have been optimal for us to change all our money because it was 50.8 and that's pretty high for, for right now in the economy. And so it only got lower from there day by day. It never went under 50, but definitely went 50.25 or 20 or something like that. And withdraw your money from the ATM, 10,000 pesos is the max, which is about two hundred dollars and if you are going to be doing excursions and tour packages and paying your resort off with uh, cash and um, all sorts of things buying souvenirs um, it's good to come already prepared with your exchanged money anyway <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, guys. if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up Make sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure the notification button is on so that you guys are alerted when a new video is um, uploaded and published. I'm trying to get more videos out there, but yeah, little workflow technical issues. Okay guys, uh, so we'll see you guys in the next one where we're going to talk about all about Corona activities. Mm, you're not going to miss that. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, leave comments below. Whoa! Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's fair.
very inappropriate. <laughs> This is a very common souvenir that a lot of uh, Filipinos people get for other people. I don't know why, but it looks fine until you take off the barrel. <laughs> I have no clue why people love like bringing this back. <laughs> anyway, we got one. It's a gift for you, Joe. He babysat Winslow while we were gone, so I'll be getting this to you soon. <laughs> there you go. Here's a very inappropriate springy member. <laughs> Thanks for watching our dog! <laughs>